Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we will be taking once again a look at how you can take over a game as an assassin. Now obviously we've had some fightery type junglers in the last video, we did AFK farming junglers in the previous one, but ultimately assassin junglers really do have a nuance and a versatility to their playstyle that allows you to best control whether or not you win certain games. And usually that means winning the game before you get into 5v5 skirmishes with Zax and Maokais. Naturally, that means you need to win the game earlier or at least snowball such that the tankiness doesn't mean anything. Kha'Zix is the most versatile assassin in that he can adapt his playstyle to any team composition and still find himself to be effective. However, in an effort to have all these principles translate to our assassin brothers and sisters, this is going to be done with full assassination items and a Dark Harvest rune set. So as always, if you do enjoy the video and learn something, please consider clicking the like button and of course subscribing if you want to be notified the next time I flame ADCs in a jungle video. And without hesitation, we go straight into our first clears. Now at this point, we're very accustomed to seeing four clears doing one side of the map, looking for level three impact. Or with certain farming junglers like Rengars and Kha'Zixes even looking potentially to do a full clear and controlling their crab. The same goes for Evelyn as I featured her in the previous Roots video. Usually the ultimate of an assassin is game changing and the fact of the matter is you don't want to be behind. So a lot of the times players take a safer approach to their early game. This Kha'Zix player really does that against difficult team comms, games where you need to protect your jungle because you're going to be invaded. But in this game and the reason I chose it is because he's going to stack you 20 kills and he's going to do it basically while playing the super aggressive jungling style. Style. Now normally as an assassin you wouldn't normally exactly do that because you don't want to give away too much to counter jungling, you don't want to die in ganks and find yourself behind the enemy jungler, especially when it's an echo. So with that in mind, lane impact is number one priority. Red, blue, grump, you see a low HP target in the top lane, waste no resources, flash, E, Q, make sure he dies. Science undead zombie slaps you around and only you can determine whether you find that enjoyable or not and you respawn. Now your first question that pops into your head is where do I go next, do I go bottom side? Do I go back top side? Remember in these cases, you will have these micro moments in the game where you are behind. For example, right now, the Echo is ahead of you on the map in terms of his timing, in terms of his camp clearing, and you know he started on the red buff, which means he's most likely stealing your Krugs, maybe your Raptors, you don't exactly know. So why even go face check that part of the jungle? Go secure the most out of objective that you need to get, topside crab. While you do that, Echo shows up on the bottom lane for a gank and gets himself a nice juicy kill. He also dies. But you can tell everything from his CS, you know he did his inner 4 camp clear, he took some of one of your camps and didn't finish them because otherwise it would be 20, and then he went to the bottom lane for the gank, that also means the bottom crab is still up. So while you think about these things in the back of your mind, you go back to the top lane, you have a Shen, he taunts, you follow up, you get another kill. Now at this point you know the echo would have respawned. If you were a jungler that could more capitalize on counter jungling and do it very quickly, Shivana and Evelyn, then perhaps you go and steal his raptors and his Krugs. Now an arrogant jungler without 200 IQ tracking would probably think that's what exactly what you need to do. But you have to question, do you want to run into the Echo and who wins that battle? Regardless of whether or not you think you win it. If you don't have mid lane prior, you don't actually want to go ahead. It's also very common practice for high elo junglers to understand how to maximize their experience points. This means when they find themselves behind, they will start clearing by taking the camps that have spawned a second time for elevated experience. That means Echo will most likely do his raptors and then sequence down to the crab. And the reason he does that also is to defend his own jungle. He knew you just ganked on top lane again. He could track your CS and see you didn't do the bottom side crab. So by going to raptors, he makes sure he secures those and defends his house. In turn, Kha'Zix doesn't even bother going there does his wolves and then his grump to set up good bottom to top camp sequencing because he 100% wants to feast on the science bones or maybe he wants to make bone broth but nonetheless he's going top lane again it's been long enough since the last gank that the top lane's sense of security will have dwindled just a little bit because top laners have a very short attention span when it comes to defending themselves against ganks and you pick up a third kill now you can help push the wave the shen is fed you are very fed and you did it while clearing let's see red into blue, into Gromp, you did some ganks, you got a crab, you did wolves and Gromp again. That's six total camps by six minutes, yet you almost have your warrior completed. The Trundle does good trolling work and shows the Echo on the map, even fights him a little bit. This reveals where Echo is and that's all you really need. You can track with numbers and anticipation all you like, but only visual confirmation will actually tell you whether or not you were doing it correctly and what exactly the Echo's game plan is. And so because of the Trundle's good work and Echo's passive approach to the game, and the fact that he hasn't been able to get anything going, all while Kha'Zix is sitting on three kills, you know you can head directly to the bottom side, take your Krugs, take your red, and then use this power thing to gank bottom side. Why don't I see this used more often? Everyone's just walking through Tribush. Most of the time that's warded early game, especially against the higher elos, hit the bouncy bouncy plant, 
go for a ride in the air, you don't have wings yet, evolve your ultimate, and then go straight down bottom lane and get two kills. Cho'Gath and Senna versus Cassiopeia and Trundle is the most season 10 bottom lane I could imagine. Actually, is it? I mean, I can think of some really weird things, but fasting Senna's a thing. Nerf the champion, please. I never want to see it again. And now our favorite bug lord is pushing a wave again. He's level six. You get the first RNG crab. You go back to base. Not only do you finish warrior and you finish your magical booties, you get a long sword and another serrated dirk. All of this and you haven't run into the echo one time. This is why understanding which lane to gank first is important. This is why understanding which lane to gank is important. Echo has been stifled this game entirely because of the Kha'Zix's decision, forcing him to play out of his comfort zone, not allowing him to really make his own decisions. That and of course the Trundle did his job and the fact that you have a Ziggs mid who just has to sit there and bomb away. Now obviously there are some downsides to this playstyle, especially when things don't go your way and they won't always go your way. Firstly, you think the next move is controlling your blue side jungle, maybe getting a Herald, gank top lane again, get some plates. From there, you can look to counter jungle, 1v1 the enemy jungle and take him off the map. That is an excellent strategy and would be a great way to try and close this game out. However, there's an alternative viewpoint. While his pathing wasn't exactly the best for it, he went and finally cleared that raptor camp and ideally you go down and do the Krugs, then you can gank the pushing bottom lane and then get dragon control. That's the alternative objective focus. I always advise this objective focus specifically around 9-10 minutes after you've been the one dictating the game through kills and ganks. But at the same time, a lane this behind should not be hard pushing so much unless they had an echo in the corner. Obviously, you can see they have an echo in the corner. The Kha'Zix's team did not know echo was waiting patiently. But it's very much a possibility that the Kha'Zix had that jungle sense go off, trying to anticipate what the echo's next move will be to get himself back in the game and thinking, hey, you know what, Kha'Zix is going to go do his blue and herald. Let me just go straight back to the bottom lane. And his prediction proves to be true. He kills the center so fast that the center playing in another game probably just spontaneously died. He uses his auto attack passive to slow the Cho'Gath before doing the Q. The fact that he flashes doesn't matter. Those claws really do have big range. However, the Diana and the Ziggs have finally decided to join the party and he sadly gives her an 800 gold shutdown. Not exactly the champion you want to be giving it to either. But two kills and an assist because the Echo also falls is basically a good day out. We are now going to have a few scrappy minutes because you cannot expect the enemy not to fight back. In this case, because of your focus on fighting and ganking, your farming numbers won't be impressive. Your experience gains will not be the best. That means when you can hold a lane, do so. Save tower plates, get some minion soak. The Shen can ult you, the Shen can TP you, get the kill on the Scion. But the thing is, you're against an Echo, not some kind of useless jungler, still a top tier jungler. As such, the fact that he's level 6 and you are level 8 as Kha'Zix means you might think you have a free Herald. But the Kha'Zix's big mistake here was that he stopped tracking. He stopped keeping an idea of where the Echo might be. He flanks him, he kills him 1v1, Red Smite doing good work, he ults away for safety, and then he runs off. Didn't even have to hit W. Now his next move upon respawning, the Echo wasn't exactly able to get the Herald himself, is instead of going to his bottom side, getting those camps and getting the Dragon Control, you can see, you know, I'm, I'm getting annoyed now, guys, objectives, you must get objectives. He goes for another lane gank, yes he dies, but his bot lane gets two kills, so it's a good noble death, a worthy sacrifice. And obviously we're talking about objectives and things like that, but he evolved R, he has harvest, he wants to stack those souls because that impart is how he scales, that impart is how he takes over the game. But at the same time, I want you guys to start thinking about this at this point. A lot of you have good early games, a lot of you play assassins while you get fed, but then you keep doing this unrelentingly while the echo farms a bit more, traps you out, and you don't get objectives. That means your kill leads aren't translating to anything that actually helps you win the game. So please do keep that in mind, at some point it is enough and now you want to try and get a gank and then translate that two dragons into Herald. He did try to his credit a bit earlier, but the Echo actually outplayed him. I mean, not really, but he did. And it's like the switch goes off for the entire team because that's exactly what happens next. Raptors and Red Buff are taken, the Cassiopeia is taking the Krugs because when you have a fed Cassiopeia, she will take your camps. Very sad. The team fight breaks out, he uses that ultimate to go straight through everyone, avoiding unit collision, gets to the back line, takes out the center, takes out the Echo and his reward is finally taking a dragon. Now normally you wouldn't actually wait until this point to see the first dragon be taken. I think he could have done it sooner, but at the same time being too focused on them isn't also good. The fact that the game is going so well and he's super fed and he's taking it over in these fights shows you that his decisions were good for this particular game. Remember, read, react, and adapt to what is happening. And while he does a dragon, I want to rewind that fight very quickly and just show you something very important. Assassins, what's your goal? Take out squishies, take out targets on the back line. Do not sit in the front tank damage. You want to flank, or in the case of having evolved ultimate on Kha'Zix, 
Drive straight through them and make sure you're taking out at least one or two people. When you're this fed, 100% you should be taking out two people. And in doing this, you distort the nature of the fight. Because once you've taken out that backline, now you can move back in if your team is having trouble finishing off the other three. The point being that being a super fed assassin as we watch Kha'Zix steal the blue on his way out after the dragon, is that you are actually using that lead in fights, and you do this by waiting for crucial spells to be used, let your team engage, let the fight evolve, look for your window, and then take it. This will be a reoccurring theme as we go through the rest of this game. And on that end, an assassin jungle or jungles in general, you must always take what is offered to steal from a certain TV show. The worst thing you can do is not take enough. Now in that case, taking the blue buff and leaving is fine, but taking his whole jungle, even better. Echo now feels desperate, goes on a blue buff invade. He jumps over the wall, you Q auto him for the passive, you ult and then you auto him again. That's very much overkill, but you know, the point is made, I suppose. And now we're at that 15 minute point, take over the game and close it out. If there are any straggling plays, any enemy team tilting, kill them, get the free gold, then focus the objectives. That has not been a focus of this game, but it's definitely what you need to close. Take the Herald, go mid lane, get another kill. Just be very, very careful. You are squishy. This build, Yumu's Duskblade, this isn't wise. You know, most of the time we preach taking Edge of Night, Conqueror playing a bit more safe, having a bit more forgiving nature. He likes Dark Harvest to stack the souls as much as possible. He wants the Yumu's for engage. He wants a Duskblade for raw damage. He's going full on squishy, pure assassin mode. Again, take what is offered back to base. See the Wandering Scion, take him out. That's your window. You have a numbers advantage. Use the Herald. When a skirmish breaks out around the mid lane, skirt the edges, do what you can. Use your Evolve W that you got at level 11 to make sure you're having some utility in fights when you don't want to dive the back line. It is a Diana, it is a Senna, it is a Scion. You cannot afford the luxury of just face tanking three people. When Shen ults you, you eat into the blue buff just to make sure your team can win fights without you. You want to see their capabilities, not because you missed a jump whatsoever, but because you overestimated the nature of the fight. No, not at all. They passed the test and I think honestly, you probably see that this game is over, but I must highlight that he falls back to the dragon after the fight again. Fight leads to an objective. He finally does a full clear while his team is resetting. He doesn't really need to go back too badly. He can take all his camps, get some influx while there's a bit of downtime on the map. Now, when you are an assassin in this particular game, I want to show you the kind of fight that you need to have in order to break the back of the enemy and actually close. Most assassin players just simply don't do this and that's why you throw in these mid to late game phases because you don't know how to do this. Watch the evolved R utility in this case. If you're a Rengar, if you're Evelyn, the same principle here using a camouflage to backline dive. The Echo is taken off your trundle, so you're already in a 4v5. You've got a Scion fighting a Ziggs in the bottom lane. And the most important member in these fights is still the Senna, just because of who she is as a champion. You are in, you use your passive auto attack to get the slow, QW, she dies immediately. And now watch as he weaves in and out using his ultimate, using those passive orders as soon as he gets out of it, weaving in the Qs off cooldown, especially with the auto Q cancel. And then when the Echo tries to dive him, he uses his E to reposition. It's not a kill mechanic, it's for repositioning. Once Echo tries to get him again, use the W, get yourself a third kill. And that right there is the Baron, and that right there is the game. Literally in a 3v4 fight, you dive the back line, you take out two people with good positioning, good use of your commas, good use of your spells, you reposition to keep yourself alive. And it's worth noting with this much control and the fact that you have 23 harvest stacks, all that activity, all the early ganking, everything talking about that objective ganking balance with his focus on ganking to get those harvest stacks has led to this exact moment. This entire game was dictated by this playstyle. Now it does require better mechanics, good positioning, understanding of when to go in, but hopefully from this you can see the example and all these closing kills he uses to get to 20. How assassin junglers and assassins in general still control solo queue for these reasons. The uncoordinated nature of games even in challenger means that you can always take it over. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Please do like, share and comment if you did. I do always like to see around 1500 likes because it makes my beard feel like it could assassinate anyone's face. Please subscribe for future jungle videos coming very soon and as always I will see you all in the next tutorial.